Hi, my name is Alex from APC Dynamics, and in this video, I will go over the accounts receivable processing for Dynamics 365 Business Central. First, we're going to go over receiving customer payments. Within receiving the customer payments, I will go through the recommended process if you are receiving customer payments for checks and the recommended procedure if you're receiving money, if it's a ACH or wire transfer. Next, I will go through processing credit memos if you need to issue any credits to your customers. Lastly, I'll go over applying open transactions within the customer account so you could apply open payments to open invoices. Let's get started. When you receive a bunch of checks from your customers, the place where you need to enter the cash receipt, it's called the bank deposits. Search on bank deposit. From here, I'm gonna click on new. Go ahead and push enter for it to generate a deposit number for you. The bank account number would be the bank where you're going to be depositing the checks to. In this case, I'm gonna choose worldwide operating bank the total deposit amount you can leave it as zero for now and the posting date would be the date that you would be actually depositing the money into your bank account now in the lines area this is where we need to put in the customers that are sending the checks to us the account type we're going to set it as customer and the account number would be the customer that's uh, on the check the document date would be the date of the customer's check and the document number would be the customer's check number. The external document number would be the same as the document number. On the credit amount field, we could leave it as blank. We're gonna click on function, apply entries. This will list out all of the open invoices and open credit memos that you could apply with your check. Based on your customer's check stub, you can go through and apply which invoices the customer is paying for. So let's say they're going to be paying this $5,000. Uh, make sure this arrow is on the line that you want to apply. Click on set applies to ID and go through and set the applications. Click on OK. And you'll see that the credit amount will automatically appear. This amount should be the same as the customer's check. Now I'm going to go through, enter my second customer. And I'm going to do this exact same thing. Apply and click on set applies to ID on the invoice that the customer is applying to click OK now let's say you have a interest from your bank that doesn't really apply to any customer you could just set the account type as GL account type in the interest GL account now since you don't really have a document number you could just type in whatever you want um, you could set that as uh, the same as the document number for the bank deposit the bank interest is $15 so assuming I'm only depositing three checks, it gives you a subtotal of what your total deposit to the bank should be. On the total deposit amount, this is what you should be depositing to the bank account. You wanna make sure the total difference is zero. Now the last step is you wanna make sure you enable this post as lump sum. Push yes. What this will do is it will create one bank ledger. So when you're doing your bank reconciliation, it's only going to display one deposit instead of having multiple deposits for you to reconcile. When you're done, click on posting and post. And that completes the process for cash receipt. This completes the process when you receive a bunch of checks from multiple customers and you're doing a bank run. Now let's talk about the cash receipt process if you receive an ACH or wire transfer. Now you could still use the bank deposits for your wire transfer if you want your users to be consistent on how to enter the cash receipts into your bank account. If you choose to use the bank deposits for ACH and wire transfers, you could skip this part of the video. For a quicker way to enter ACH and wire payments from the customers to you, you will use the cash receipt journal. The cash receipt journal looks very similar to your general journal and your payment journal. Here are the important fields that you need to fill in. First is the posting date. This is the date that the cash actually hit your bank account. The document type, we leave that as a payment. Since ACH typically don't have a document number, uh, we could just let Business Central assign a number for us automatically. If you want to use the bank's confirmation number, you're welcome to do so and enter that in the document number. 
the account type would be the customer because that's who we'll be receiving the cash from. And the cust account number would be the customer number that you're going to be receiving the cash against. The amount we will leave it at zero. And you see that the balancing account type and a balancing account number is automatically defaulted for us. From here, we're going to click on home and apply entries. We're just going to make sure that this arrow is pointing to the invoices that you're going to be applying this payment to. So click on set applies to ID and you'll notice that the applies to ID automatically fills in with the document. Number. Click on the next one, set to applies ID. Now when I click on OK, you'll notice that the amount will automatically be filled in for us. You'll notice that the amount is set as negative. That's because we are crediting AR and debiting cash. So don't worry about this negative. It's supposed to be negative because we are receiving a payment and we're crediting accounts receivable. If you have multiple ACH deposits throughout the day, you just go to the next line and go to the next customer. Again, leave the amount as zero. Click on apply entries and click on set applies to IT. Click on OK. The amount will automatically be populated for you. Once you're done, click on post and that will complete the process. All right, so we covered the receiving customer payments. Next, let's talk about processing credit memos for customers if you need to give them credit for whatever reason. To process a credit memo for a customer, go to credit memos, click on sales credit memos, and this will give you the credit memo list. So from here, I'm just gonna click on new and type in the customer that I'm gonna give a credit to. You could click on this three dots and you could choose from a list of your customers. So in this case, I'm gonna choose my Canon group. Click OK. Now on the lines area, this is where I need to define what I wanna give the customer's credit for. Note that if you choose an item and you post this credit memo, the inventory will be returned to the location that you define on the lines. If you do not want the inventory to come back to your inventory, then you need to define this either as a resource or a GL account. In this case, I'm just gonna give a credit and I'm just gonna give a, the customer credit for my delivery. The quantity will be one and the unit price will be the dollar amount that you wanna give the customer credit for. If you know the invoice that this credit memo will be applied to, you could click on show more on the general fast tab and define the applies to document number field. When you click on the three dots on the applies to document number field, you'll get a list of the open transactions that you can apply this credit memo to. Click on the line that you want to apply this credit memo to and click OK. And this will automatically fill in the document number. In this case, I am just going to blank this out. I am going to post this as an open credit. I'm not going to apply it to any particular invoice. I'm going to go in and post. And this will give an open credit to the customer. Now, another way to enter a credit memo is if you made a mistake on an invoice and you need to redo an invoice, you can just pull up the posted invoice in question. So I'm just going to pull up a invoice. And let's say I want to do a correct correction on this particular invoice. When you click on home and click on correct and you could create a corrective credit memo and this will create a credit memo that will automatically be applied to this invoice. Now instead of using correct, I chose to create a corrected credit memo in case you need to make any additional edits to this credit. If I click on the show more on general, you'll see that it will automatically apply to the invoice in question. If you don't want to make any edits to this credit memo, you could just click on post and this will post the credit memo and I'll have it automatically be applied to the invoice. So the last thing we'll go over is applying open payments or credit memos to, to open invoices. When I run my age accounts receivable report, I'm going to run it as a 531-2023 preview. I can see that there are outstanding payments and outstanding credit memos that are still listed as open in my AR agent report. 
If the customer specifies they want to apply a certain credit memo to a certain invoice, you'll need to make sure that you apply those out before you send the customer a statement. To do that, I need to pull up the customer in question. So go to my Canon group and I'm going to drill down on my balance. From here, you'll, you'll get a list of all of the open invoices, credit memos, payments, and any other transaction that has not been fully applied. So let's say the customer tells you that they want to apply this $25 to invoice 103054. To do this, make sure my arrow is pointed at the credit memo. Click on apply entry. Scroll down and find the invoice that you want to apply this credit memo to. Just click on set applies to ID. When you click on this, you'll notice that the set applies to ID is populated with your user ID. To post the application, you want to make sure you click on post application. You could change the date of the posting date if you want. For now, I'm going to leave it the same. Click on OK. Once it's been applied, you'll notice that the remaining amount for this particular invoice is $25 less because we applied the $25 credit to this particular invoice. If you made a mistake and you need to unapply, you just need to click on home and make sure the line and make sure you highlight the line that you want to do, uh, you want to unapply for. Click on this drop down and click on unapply entries. And this will give you a list of all of the payments or credit memo that was applied to this invoice. To unapply, click on this unapply button. It's going to ask you if you want to unapply, push yes. And that's it. To look at all of the customer's historical transaction, you can just click on related history and ledger entries. This will show you all of the open and closed transactions for this customer. If you want to look at what closed out this particular, what invoice got applied this, to this particular payment, Make sure my arrow is highlighted on the payment line that I want to inquire more details about. Click on entry and applied entries and it'll show you the invoices that and credit memos that was applied to this particular invoice. And that's it. All right. So in this video, we cover how to receive customer payments using the bank deposit screen and the cash receipt journal. Next, we want to processing credit memos, how to enter a credit memo manually as well as using the create corrective credit memo button to have business central automatically create a credit memo for us. Lastly, we went to the customer drilling down the balance to apply open payments or credit memos to invoices. And we also looked at how to view what payments were applied to invoices and vice versa. If you have any additional questions on AR processing, please let us know. Thank you.